Hello, welcome to another Red9 demo. This follows on from the, the May release 2022. We've been saying it's a big release, there is an awful lot in it, and we're still going through it in demos, so bear with us. Um, this one I'm going to start doing about the Red9 Anim. So, Red9 Anim is a fundamental building part of the Red9 pipelines and the ProPack pipelines. We have clients who actually save our 9 Anim files over Maya files. So, their actual main library is a Red9 Anim file because it's more flexible. It's loadable relative to other spaces, so you can build a library and copy and paste data across, and it's very clean. So it's a really important feature. But it's always had a few limitations. Um, one is that we knew we could get more speed out of it. Um, we had files, well, there's a file, a test file that we use to, to, um, to validate stuff, which is 3,000 frames long of mocap, and it was taking about 22 seconds to load, 23, something like that. It now loads in about five seconds. And that's because we've changed the encoder and decoder process. So that's you know that's a real big gain. But the other limitation, in fact, the other problem has always been saving animation layer data. And the problem with saving animation layer data is that what we've current what we've always done in Red9 is that we use the um, the Maya merge codes under the hood. So we use their internal code to merge the layers into memory, grab the data from that, and then return the data. And the problem with that is that Maya merging of animation layers is painfully bad, uh, painfully slow. This file kind of brought it all home. This is the one that's triggered a lot of data. This is a client file, so um, obviously we've got to double check with the client first, but hopefully this should be fine. We have a lot of layers in here. I've replaced him with Boxman to hopefully get rid of any um, inclination of who he is. Replace him with Boxman, and if we look at this data, we have um, curves going out to frame, let's select memory controls. So the actual time range is 679, and we have keys going out to frame 1084. Merge layers know nothing about time. It just takes the keys and merges them. And the problem with that is it bakes over time of all the keys it goes. So it will physically bake out to 1084 frames. And if we do that now, uh, if I go right click, merge, and we go, okay, it's going. We are up to frame 100. We've got 10 more of these to go. It's it's ridiculously slow. Um, I, we've, we've discussed this with Autodesk. Um, we'll see what happens. But it's slow, and it's painfully slow. And the reason that saving Red9 Anims with Anim layers was slow is because we do this process under the hood. Um, it's still going. Uh, it's still going. You can see the little uh, um, mouse spinning. Still going. Crikey, come on. There we go, it's done it, hurrah. Painful, 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 okay? And that was one of the issues, that was a limitation because we were using their Autodesk code thinking, obviously that's the best way of doing it. Still is. What we do now is we do a frame sampler. So, um, and this opens up some, some new potential to us. Previously, if you had nodes that were in, uh, that were constrained or nodes that were driven, we didn't collect any data for them. So they were just, they weren't in the Red9 Anim data at all. And the issue with that is if you've got a rig where you've constrained a wrist to a table or you've, I don't know, you, you've constrained a foot to a, to a football or you know something like that, a typical case, those wouldn't go through to the data, so you'd lose it, unless those constraints were still in place in the file when you loaded it. What we now do is we look at all the plugs. If the plug has an input and the input is of type Anim curve or a constraint or a direct input or anything that's feeding it other than animation curve, it gets sent to the frame sampler. And what that means is that the data we save is a true representation of what the rig is doing at that time. And the idea is that you should be able to save Red9 Anim from it, load a fresh rig with nothing on it, no constraints at all, load the data, and it will still be the same representation of that animation. The constraints won't be there, obviously, but the data will be correct. And that's quite a big key. That's one of the, the goals that we've had. Um, in fact, to just help with that, so this guy has, it's just anim curves, but it's anim curves on an anim layer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna track that wrist. So I'm gonna use the tracker, throw that to a locator. Okay, I'm gonna select the wrist, select all the anim, la select all the anim layers, come into the graph editor, we'll remove everything on that wrist, remove. Hopefully, that's it. That wrist should be static, which it is. And all we'll do is just constrain that wrist back to this locator. So I'll constrain that to that. Uh, constrain parent. Okay. So the wrist is only animating now because we have a constraint driving that wrist. 
so it's kind of a, one of the worst case scenarios. You've got constraints in there, you've got massive of anim layers, and we want to save that data. So I'm going to go file, save on an anim direct, save. Uh, what's the matter with that? Fail to ID any MRIGs in the scene. No, I don't believe you. What's that file? Save. Got the wrong thing selected. Uh, we'll save it over that file there. Save. Now then, if you compare this, that's the speed of the of the sampler. That's sampling all of the all of the data in there. It's slower because I'm doing a video, so I'm collecting the data, and because it always slows things down whenever you collect data. But it is light years faster than the previous version that we just showed you with layer merging. That's it, data is saved. Okay, so if we now get rid of all of the curves off this guy, in fact, what we'll do is we will use the new merge layer. Where the heck is it? Somewhere in here. Um, I haven't got it in code. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Uh, give me a second. Let me do this because this is something we're going to expose as well. Um, da, da, da. This might be really boring, so just bear with me for a sec. Red 9, I can't, I can't be bothered to uh, to remove all those onion curves. Put red 9 uh, dot dot propack dot core dot uh, animation animation yes as r 9 p anim r 9 p anim dot merge anim layers I'll probably find it in the line below there we go merge all anim layers done go so this is our new function of that's well that's actually sending it to the merger but we're going to expose this as a, as a quicker way of merging anim layers for everybody because it's what four times faster five times faster than mayor version there you go so that's baked all that data down i'm just going to remove all the keys from him uh cut keys yes so he should return to t-pose which he has done characters disappear because i've bodged him like that oh except for that thing let's just delete that as well okay so he's a fresh rig there's nothing on him uh just make sure we've cut keys i think yeah, we have. There we go. Right, so he's a fresh rig, nothing on him. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go file, import current. I'm going to give it that file we saved out. And in it comes. Bear in mind, this risk was constrained. Everything else was in item layers. He's come back in as we would intend. So data integrity is really important. And that's something that we've we've addressed quite a lot with this build. Um, if you follow the other um, demos that we've been doing recently, there's another one on the wrist locks. Same thing. It's about data integrity. Whatever is driving the rig, we now sample. We get the data as it should be, and we give you the version. So you should be able to load it on a fresh version of the rig, and it should just play. That's the idea. So that's quite an important step. Uh, we mentioned speed. Uh, let me do it on here. Let's just see if we can spin this one up. Uh, file, uh, open, uh, Standard library, I think it is. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Floor routine, that one there. Okay, open. So this is, oh, that's very true. I'm going to do it through the run on anim, import direct. Um, floor routine. So this is three, three and a half thousand frames of anim. Okay, go on, off your trot. Bosh, there we go. Da, 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 da. Files in. So that's three and a half thousand frames of anim. So it's really quick now. Um, much, much, much quicker than it was previously, which is great. The other feature that's gone in is the ability to physically load onto animation layers themselves. So again, previously when you loaded to um, something that had an anim layer, you get a warning to say it's going to be wrong unless you flatten the layers and it physically tell you, do you want to flatten layers? You go, yes, it flatten it and it will load the data. Well, it, it's great, except that sometimes you may want to keep the data and you want to load it onto a layer. So we can now physically load red nine anims onto a layer. So there's there's two kind of caveats to this. If I load this data, let's um, let me load the walk onto this guy. <clears throat> Off he goes, right? And we'll grab the rig and we'll throw that rig into a layer. So we've got a fresh layer up here, right? I'm going to load, I'm going to use the UI because we need to start getting people to know about this as well. So we'll go that and we'll load block jump. Okay. And we'll load uh, everything set to default. Okay. Now then, we've got that layer selected. I'm going to load. What it's going to do is it's going to go, 
yes, we can deal with layers. So previously you just have to flatten the merge. Now you have continue with merge and it'll actually tell you that we now handle it. It goes through a different path. The issue with animation layers is there is no API support for it. Um, thank you, Mayor. There's no API support for it and it's a pain, real pain in the backside to deal with, but we've managed to get it to a state where we think it's presentable. Um, so I'm gonna say continue and merge. And what it's gonna do, it takes a completely different path to load. It's slightly slower um, because it's doing a lot more data. And you'll see what it's done is it's loaded that data. Now that data is on this layer, right? So there's the block jump and roll. If I mute that, we've still got the walk underneath it. But if you were to mute that layer there, what you find is that this data wouldn't actually be the block jump. It would be the merger of the block jump over and atop the keys you've already got in the base layer. So it wouldn't be accurate. It wouldn't be proper data. It's just, it looks right because the layer underneath is right. If we were to kill all this off, let's load this again. So we'll load, load the thing flat and we can do it a slightly different way. Okay, so we've got T-Pose, nothing in it. Uh, select the controls. This time I'm gonna make an empty base layer. I'm gonna do something and we'll do it the opposite way around. So we'll do the walk sit and we'll load it onto that layer and in layer one, yes, continue. <clears throat> like I say, it is slower. Um, there's not a lot we can do about it um, unless we get API support, which we haven't. So bear with us. That's loading it up. Come on. Bump, bump, bump. It's a longer sequence, that one anyway. Okay, that's in. And what we'll do is we'll do the same thing. We'll make another layer. So this second layer has the base jump. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mute that layer. Okay, so he's still got no data, even though all the keys are on that one. And I'm going to give it a different animation file. Uh, we'll do the block jump like we did previously. Load. Uh, continue. Come on. I could speed these up in the edit, but I'm not going to. <laughs> In it comes. Okay, so now we have block jump on layer two. And if we were to do a solo on that layer, okay, what have we done? What have we done? Turn that one off. Uh, solo that one. So the walk is on layer one. And on layer two, we have, ah, I've got to turn that off. Layer two, we have the jump. So we this time we have actually got accurate data. We've got proper data in layer two and proper layer, proper data, sorry, in layer one. Effectively, you've got two takes and they're in separate layers. So you can do that mechanism. So again, it opens up new possibilities of maintaining, managing data um, as an animator. Just opens up a few more doors to you. One of the other things that we've done is the maintain uh, is now fixed. This maintain parent spaces was completely broken. I didn't realize, um, nobody's told me, so presumably people have been swearing under the hood and not using it, which is a shame because it's quite a powerful feature. Uh, the maintain, based on the regs, <clears throat> the regs have parent spaces. So I'm gonna kill the keys off for the parent spaces on these two nodes. Okay, so we'll kill those keys off, kill delete. And I'm gonna set those to be, uh, pip space, which looks weird because obviously the transforms are different. The data that you've just got, this file here, the load walk, the load walk, these are in main space. So they're in a different space. So with the maintain parent space on, what it's gonna do is it's gonna load the data. It's gonna do a cache <coughs> and it's gonna recalculate it. And what it's doing with that is it's setting the cache and then it's changing those flags back and then rebuilding the file. So effectively you get the same animation data except that the data is maintaining whatever the risk lock, sorry, whatever these parent spaces were in the original file, sorry, in the original, in the current scene. So the current scene uh, parent spaces get maintained, the incoming animation data then recalculates itself based on the state of that current file. So again, that's been fixed as well. Um, hopefully that's an insight into the new stuff. Um, like I say, there's been a huge amount of work gone into the Redline Anim code. Um, it's expanding on a daily basis and it will probably continue to expand as more and more requests go in. Um, but hopefully that gives you an insight into it. Um, don't forget to like the YouTube channel, go and have a look at the website, go grab ProPack, go grab the, uh, the Puppet Rig, have a play um, and honestly change your workflows because it is as fast and as good as we can get it. Um, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.